So far, we've been working exclusively with Moho's vector tools. But in this video, we're going to look at Moho's bitmap drawing tools, which let you make drawings and paintings that look closer to natural media. Now, to get access to the bitmap drawing tools, we need to be working on an image layer. So let's create one. I'll give it a name, and we want to make sure it's at least as big as our document resolution, and we want the background transparent for our purposes, and I'll just make that the default. Now in our tools palette, we have a very limited set of tools. We just have a brush, a paint bucket fill tool, an eraser, and a crop tool. However, with the brush tool selected, we get a bunch of functionality up here in the toolbar. Here you select the type of brush you want to use, more on that in a second. Then you control the size of the brush here, and you can pick the color here. Note that you can't use the style palette to set the color of a bitmap brush. To get a bitmap color picker, you need to go to Window, Bitmap Color, and then we can make sure it's docked as well. With this, we can easily pick the color and set the opacity of the color. Now what this doesn't give us is the ability to create a nice palette of colors to easily pick. So what you might want to do is make another image layer and import a separate image you prepared with your palette of colors on it. Then when using the brush tool, even on another layer, you can hold shift and get a color picker and select any color on the stage. And to change how your colors interact, you can use the Blend Modes drop down here. Most of these are standard blend modes that you would find in Photoshop or other digital painting programs. However, there's a pretty key feature that's hidden in here as well, and that's the Draw Behind option. This lets you paint your color behind the existing color. So this would be useful for coloring in a shape that you've outlined, say. You could try doing the same thing with the paint bucket tool, but depending on how textured your brush is, that might not end up looking great. If you want to do sort of the opposite, you can turn on lock transparency. Then the brush will only paint where there's already color with the same amount of transparency. And of course, if you want to erase something, you can use the eraser tool. And the eraser tool also gives us access to a handy clear all button if you want to erase the whole layer. So those are the options for controlling color. Now let's look at the brush itself. You have a drop down with a couple options here. The spacing is how far apart your brush tip gets stamped. For most brushes, you want this very low to be able to make an actual brush stroke. Smoothing is how much the software will try to correct for your pen wobble to make your strokes smoother. Then down here, you can turn on pressure sensitivity, velocity sensitivity, or directional sensitivity, assuming the brush you're using is set to use those in the first place. Now this drop down here is where the real possibilities of the bitmap brush become apparent. By default, we have a bunch of different preset brushes with a variety of different textures and nuances, organized into categories. Brushes like these let you create more natural looking painterly effects than you can get with vector tools. To dig into the settings for a brush, click this gear icon up here. This shows you the stamp, which is the head of the brush, and the texture, which creates the paper-like texture within the brush stroke. And down here, we have settings for how the brush should react to your tablet stylus. It can react to the pressure, the velocity, the direction, and under general settings, we have the spacing and the default blend mode. Of course, on this preset brush, we can't actually change that, so let's set up a custom brush. The easiest way to do that is to just duplicate an existing brush with the duplicate button. Then I can change the name here and choose a category to put it in. If I want, I can create a custom category over here and then put the brush in there. Now I can change whatever I want. 
Say I want to use a different image for the stamp. I can click Change, and then Browse for a new image to use as the stamp. Then we can change the texture too, or just get rid of the texture altogether. Then for all these settings, you can set them to either linear, exponential, or logarithmic. The preview will show you the effect that that will have. The left end is lowest pen pressure, and the right is highest pen pressure. Then when you click Save, that brush will show up in your custom content folder in bitmap brushes as a .moho brush file. Now, just to finish out our look at the bitmap tools, we have the Crop tool. This is good for cases where a particular layer only contains one element of a scene. You can crop down the image to just the size of the content instead of having it take up the whole stage. Okay, so that's it for the bitmap tools. Now, let's try these out and do some frame-by-frame -frame animation. We'll do that in the next video. I'll see you there.